Hi, it's Wesley with 22 Zines, and I'm going to talk about my planner slash journaling setup, I guess, for 2024. It feels really weird for me to call it a setup because it uh, doesn't feel like a setup to me. Like, I, I don't really change my systems very often, uh, but I am implementing some new ideas for sort of the overlap between planning and journaling. See, that's the thing, is that for me, I know that a lot of people, uh, I know that the overlap between planning and journaling varies a lot per person. <laughs> and so for a long time, I had them very distinct in my life, and I'd still say they're relatively distinct, where I keep my creative aspects, journaling, memory keeping, all that sort of thing, thoughts just like in, in separate journals, and then my planner was exclusively for writing down appointments and then e not even to-do lists. Like, to-do lists would be just on random scraps of paper. <laughs> and to, in my current system, they kind of still are. But <laughs> the um, re this year, or, or this last year, uh, 2023, I uh, changed it a little bit to try and improve my relationship with planning and scheduling because... I think that's something that I still kind of struggle with, is um, planning in a way that feels comfortable and accessible for me, because I I think also, especially in the past, I've gotten a better handle on it now, but in the past it felt very difficult for me to plan um, really any amount of time in advance, like to the next day, because I just never knew when I would be waking up one day and just not feeling good and not feel able to keep up with a lot of the things that I had set. Um, you know, e even to the point of, like, it was really hard to get out of bed, let alone, you know, meet the sort of s lower uh, expectation ideals and stuff for planning. Uh, <laughs> but I think I've been slowly trying to, uh, as I've as I've gotten a handle on that, as I've sort of started feeling better um, in general, just trying to find ways to incorporate planning in a way that feels supportive. Um, and so now this year, this next year, <laughs> 2024, I am implementing a few creative practices alongside my scheduling, um, but I would say they're still relatively distinct. All right, that's enough of, like, chit-chatting beforehand. First off, I'm gonna just run through my journals, the things that I would not consider part of my planner, and then I'll talk about my planner. So for my journals, I have um, quite a few and they all just kind of serve different purposes and evolve somewhat naturally. The first one I have is this, which I guess is closest to like a commonplace notebook, but I don't, I didn't know what that was called. Basically, it's just like my study notebook where anytime that I'm reading a book, <laughs> I really like to have a space to write down thoughts, quotes, um, things I want to come back to, references that the book uh, makes, like um, citations that exist in the book. This is especially for uh, nonfiction. I read a lot of nonfiction, and so I like having this as a place to kind of study. <laughs> and it's just a, it's a blank book, and I just write a lot of quotes with page numbers, um, random thoughts that I have while I'm reading that aren't necessarily that of the author. Um, sometimes I'll label if I have a question. <laughs> it's pretty, you know, it's pretty free form. The purpose of this is just to keep my, keep my notes as I'm reading things. And, uh, this is just like a journal that I got in a trade. And so the it says on the front, an illustrated outline history of mankind. It's made from like a recycled book cover. <laughs> and so I really like it. And inside it's just kind of regular paper. And, you know, it's, it like has slight, you can kind of see through to the other side, but you know, not any more than any normal piece of paper. So that's my whatever notebook. I have a diary, and I've basically been keeping a diary in something, you know, 
since I was a kid. And so it's not necessarily a diary as in, here's what I did today, you know, the 17th century style diary. It's like a, you know, a, a thoughts and feelings journal kind of diary. Um, like, and I just, it's just text pretty much. And sometimes I'll doodle in it, but it's really, it's just kind of free flowing thoughts feelings, um, things I'm upset about, things I'm happy about. You, you know what feelings are. What am I doing here? <laughs> so I have a lot of previous ones. It's just like anytime that one gets filled up, I move to the next one. And then each one I put a little sticker on the front. And yeah, <laughs> that's that. I have a separate tarot journal. And originally I was keeping tarot readings where I wanted to actually take notes in, uh, this, uh, but I quickly found that I was using up too many pages, and so I wanted to get a slightly thicker one. This is like the the thinner one. This is the thicker one. I wanted to get a thicker one that had more pages for tarot readings just so that I wouldn't run out as quickly. I find there's still kind of some overlap between the two. <laughs> These are moleskins, by the way. Um, I find there's kind of some overlap. Like, I still end up writing some tarot readings or cards or thoughts about tarot in this one. But in general, if I'm doing like a dedicated reading, I try to keep it to this. And I, let's see, we'll still sometimes do it. Like, there's really not all that much that's interesting to look at in here if you aren't actually reading it. Um, but I'll try to write down, you know, the deck that I used, uh, this one I, well, I was playing with deck interviews, uh, <laughs> which, you know, I, I don't know that I do anymore, as you can see this is from 2021, but just in general, like, I'll try to write down whatever tarot I'm working with. I like noting the moon phase, just, I don't know, I do that in my other notebook too. Uh, my journal, the questions that I was reading, like spread positions, and then the cards that I got from each one space for overall thoughts, and then I just kind of journal, like, usually one card at a time, and then I'll have overall thoughts either, you know, I think I put them here just because I happen to have extra space, but sometimes it'll just be after. Um, yep, I mean, it's, it's a lot of text. That is what this is. <laughs> so this is, kind of, this is my tarot journal. Maybe someday I'll put a sticker on the front of this, too, because that seems to be the aesthetic I'm going towards. I have this little notebook, which is, I guess I'd describe it as kind of like a witchy notebook, um, just thoughts on magic or, um, uh, I don't know. I guess <laughs> this one's a little more personal, so I'm not sure if I really want to flip through it exactly, but I'll just pull out a couple of pages, like, uh, you know, some of it is sort of combination of art and writing about research that I've done. This is a sort of piece, I guess, on the, or inspired by the Aufhacher, which is a German mythological beast <laughs> or be being. Um, I, I suppose it's not just the Aufhacher. It is, it is like a, uh, a type of fairy in a way. Anyway, <laughs> uh, so, you know, it's, it's stuff like that. I have, um, you know, I don't, I suppose I have been kind of casting spells-ish. Uh, those would go in here. Uh, like, here's, here's something I can show. Um, it's sort of like, this was sort of a, on the concept of sacred rest, um, and like, it includes sort of these more poetry prose things where it's, you know, very dramatic and very, <laughs> you, know, very you know, when I'm in that magical mindset and I want to write something cool and pretty. And so I'll say like, for a moment, I found myself longing for the curse of the vampire merely for the fact that it grants them infinite time and thus the rest will never interfere with living life. But that's the thing, isn't it? They're dead. <laughs> I, 
I've come to accept the limited duration of life and found a beauty in death. Rest is as much a reflection of that life as death is going on like that. Um, I don't know why I'm laughing. Like, I actually, I kind of like it, but I will admit that it's a little bit cheesy in some places. Um, you know, this is, this is an example of like a spell, I guess you would say. It's, it's like this piece of sandpaper, um, and it's writing down sort of a visualization ritual. I'll just say what it says right here. A visualization ritual for when you are re reliving a negative encounter experienced with a stranger to banish them from your thought. And that is something that, you know, okay, on the rare occasion that I have a negative experience encounter with a stranger, sometimes I tend to replay that in my head a whole lot and it stresses me out. And so this is like a visualization exercise where like you, you bring the experience to mind, in particular the setting and the stranger, if they spoke, picture them speaking. Gather air in your lungs and cheeks. As you do so, the stranger in your memory will turn to sand. Exhale as though blowing out a candle. The stranger will be blown away as sand grains, leaving you in the setting without the aggressor. And this is just kind of a little sigil about it, and this is a piece of sandpaper that I can um, feel for something tactile to kind of I don't know, because it's cool. Sand, sandpaper, you know. <laughs> anyway, I didn't really mean for this to turn into, like, a flip through of my witch journal, but the point is, um, witch journal, that's what this is about. And so, with all of that out of the way, now I can talk a little bit about my planning system. So, the planner I've used for the last couple of years is the Slingshot Organizer. Uh, Slingshot is a... Uh, radical community newspaper in Berkeley, California, or like it's based in Berkeley. Actually, are they based in Oakland or Berkeley? I don't know, whatever. Bay Area, California. And um, this is their planner that they make every year. And so last year, or yeah, I, I got this for 2023. And this is sort of the smaller version of it. It's, you know, it's pretty, it's pretty small. It's like, you know, squat postcard size. Um, I got this one because I kind of wanted to do the binding one, like the perfect binding one to not have as much plastic just cause you know, the, this one has the plastic rings and I was thinking like, okay, reduce plastic. Maybe I'll go with this one and it might feel nice, uh, like a nicer approach to, planning because before that my planners were just very um minimal utilitarian and I basically had a had a very hateful relationship with with it um and so I thought like oh well if this one looks kind of like a book and it's rad and it's made by this cool punk group like maybe I'll it'll sort of help repair my relationship I guess with planning and I'd say that they kind of did like you know, I feel a lot better about planning now than I did at the beginning of 2023. Um, but yeah, so the inside, I made this little collage thingy, which is two little pockets where sometimes I would hold, uh, business cards to just have handy. I didn't end up really utilizing that, but I still like kind of how this looks. <laughs> um, and then the interior has, you know, a menstrual calendar, which I, uh, did not end up needing to use <laughs> later on in the year. Um, year to glance for 2023 and 24 months, which I kind of briefly used, but I don't end up using the month, monthly calendar sections very often. And then just the daily, you know, uh, whatever you call it, we weekly, weekly, weekly spreads where I would just write, you know, lists of things to do, things that I had to do each day. If I had appointments, I would write, you know, the appointment time in it. And what I really like about these, um, uh, planners, what I like about the slingshot organizers is that, uh, for one, I love the hand-drawn scrappy, vibe. It feels very accessible. It's pretty and I like the look of it, but it doesn't feel 
like I need to be very uh, particular about the way that I write in it. I, I like the way that my handwriting looks next to these things. <laughs> That's maybe a weird thing, <laughs> but I, I like it. Um, and then under each uh, day, it has see, these moments in radical history. <laughs> and uh, so, for example, September the 22nd, um, it was the autumn equinox, which has listed here. And then it says, 1975, radical and FBI informant Sarah Jane Moore attempts to assassinate President Ford. 1919, great U.S. steel strike begins, 365,000 walk off jobs for four months. And so they have just like these little things about someone, you know, a prominent um, moment in activist history, in... Um, you know, socialist or anarchist history, and sometimes it's just really uh, cool people. Sometimes it's about uh, strikes and activism that were done. Sometimes it's, you know, some really shitty things, and sometimes it's some really good things. And of course, it has holidays too. Um, but I really like that. Uh, you know, here's like an example of some of the more positive thing. Thursday the 21st, uh, not always Thursday, September 21st, 1937, Tolkien's Hobbit is published. <laughs> so that's nice. And it, no, it's like UN International Day of Peace. That's a nice thing. Leonard Cohen is born. <laughs> so, um, yeah, this is the planner that I've been using. And then in the back, they have a few uh, of the articles that they have published that year that, uh, in the Slingshot Organizer newspaper that are, um, handy information to have on hand. So like this one on abortion access and this one on like what to do in an interaction with the police. And so it has a couple pages like that, how to unionize <laughs> consent. Um, and then it's got this list of radical contacts uh, separated by state, and then um, they have international contacts as well. And it's basically uh, what it says right here, like, uh, radical spaces you can visit to find radical DIY or countercultural people. Uh, so that's pretty cool. And then in the back, they have this contact list that's organized by letters. I did not end up using that. And then just a few pages in the back, just spare. And I ended up making a couple notes on that, but not really that many. So, uh, this was my planner and now we're getting to this year's planner where I'm implementing a few new things. So this is the slingshot organizer for 2024. And I got the bigger version which is in a ring coil. And I think I'm actually going to prefer this a lot because, you know, the the perfect binding, it was cute and pretty, and I'm glad that it was less plastic, but it was kind of, it, it makes it harder because it doesn't lie flat. So this is something that can lie flat, and hopefully I will like that. It's pretty much the same thing, you know? It's uh, got your menstrual calendar, it's got the years ahead, it's got the months, 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 and then just, oh yeah, this they have a list of books they want to burn, which is like radical book recommendations, basically, nonfiction, fiction, and poetry. Uh, they have this little thing, which was a, a snippet from an article that they put in one of the slingshot newspapers. Um, by the way, Slingshot, I believe all of it is available to read online, and I will link information about Slingshot below. Uh, anyway, so here's like a clip about Leap Into Action, which is using Leap Day as a an opportunity to, uh, as they say it, Leap Day offers an extra day and invites us to shake off our routine. The capitalist system, its technology, and its distractions are fragile. Alternatives do exist. February 29th offers an invitation. How do you really want to live? What would you do if you were living life like it really mattered? What will you do with your extra day? And so, of course, they sort of point out, it's like, well, yeah, you don't you don't get the day off. How is this not a holiday? I don't know. But it's, it's sort of a, meant to be an encouragement to use the Leap Day as a moment for reflection and uh, putting some of your uh, wishes and into action in some way, whether that's sort of on an activist society level or on a personal activism level, as in like um, building a life that you want yourself. <laughs> anyway, anyway, so I like that. And then it just like jumps straight into it with uh, 
pretty much the same thing that we saw last year. Um, it looks exactly the same. It is the same text and everything, just sort of on a slightly different size. And so, you know, it just leaves me a little bit more room to write. I don't know if I'm going to end up using this for to-do lists, because the thing is, like, sometimes I'll want to write a to-do list in my planner, but most of the time I actually kind of prefer just writing a random to-do list on a scrap of paper and, you know, using it that way. And I don't know why that is. I think I just like um, the flexibility of being able to write it in different ways on different pieces of paper. Um, that I... Okay, no, you know what it is. <laughs> if I'm being really honest with myself, the reason that I like doing to-do lists that way is because I like um, the fact that if I don't finish everything on a to-do list that's on a separate piece of paper, I can crumple it up and throw it away or, you know, recycle it. But it's like, I can get rid of it. And... I don't have to cross everything off and I don't like being in my planner and seeing some things that are not crossed off. Even if I have realized like, okay, these things don't need to get done or at least not in the way that I had planned them. But still, I just, I don't, I'm, I, it, it's something that I probably at some point need to work on being more comfortable with is like having these tasks left undone. But I like in general, I don't know. <laughs> we'll see where it goes with that. Um, yeah, I ended up going through and highlighting a couple of the holidays or astrological days, um, like the Lunar New Year here, the equinoxes, solstices, that sort of thing. They also have the new moon and full moons listed. Yeah. Um, and the paper, by the way, is just kind of like normal, normal, decent quality copy paper. Like, it's probably not fountain pen friendly, but for most other normal pens, like, it works great for me. Um, yeah, and so I I really like it, and I am probably going to continue. I mean, I guess we'll, we'll see how it goes this year, but I am probably going to continue using Slingshot. Um, it's simple, but it's also cute and punky. So, now the exciting part. <laughs> is in the back going through the radical contacts again okay so in the back which I've noted with this piece of washi tape so I can just grab and pull it over this is my more bullet journal kind of setup that I have in the back here for this year and I'm kind of excited because I think it'll encourage me to actually use my planner a little bit more and continue to foster that positive relationship with the planner as an entity. <laughs> so here I have just pasted this picture that I have had for a while in my collage box uh, of just a bunch of really cool punks and wrote 2024 here. This page is blank right now, but I'm thinking of doing a tarot card of the year and maybe a word of the year and doing some sort of spread here. I'll probably do that um, in the coming week or so. Uh, I'm going to be pulling my card of the year uh, at the end of today, since it's the solstice. <laughs> um, and I just, it feels like a good time to do it. But I'll show you the rest of the stuff that I have set up. Um, here I put in some notes on a couple of reading challenges that I want to do. Um, one of them is the Massachusetts Center for the Book is doing a 12 months, 12 books thing, where basically they have a prompt uh, to read a, a book that uh, fulfills the prompt for each month, and then you submit it, and at the end of the year, then you can qualify for a prize. <laughs> I think it's just like a tote bag or something, but I'm just really excited about that. So I put in all of the prompts. They are like, re a book that you read years ago and may feel differently about now in January, a uh, book with a color in the title, etc. So I'm kind of excited about that. And this page I left open for the Boston Public Library Bingo, which is something that they do for summer reading every year. Uh, so as soon as they release that, I'll print out the little bingo card and put it here. <laughs> and this is just a sticker from a local bookstore. Here is sort of another challenge plan that I want to do to be more intentional about studying some magic occult kind of topics. And so my plan is that I'm going to pick a different theme or, you know, a different subject that I want to research every month and then 
I'll pick one of these, you know, I'm not picking them in advance, but basically it's like each month I'll, or rather each astrological sign, <laughs> I'll be picking one of these things to study and then, um, crossing it off. And then I'll have a little bit of space to sort of write what that thing was. Not entirely sure what I'm going to write in here. Obviously there's not nearly enough room for my note taking. All the note taking will go in my big, uh, you know, study book for sure. <laughs> uh, but, you know, just a little something about summary of what I learned, whether I liked it, maybe even just draw a little thing in here. I don't know, just drew a little box space to put something about the <laughs> subject that I'm researching. And so I like this. I think there's a lot of these things that I've had, I've vaguely explored in different ways that I really want to intentionally try to look into more this year in like a more devoted way. So I'm pretty excited about that. I am doing 2024s in 2024, <laughs> um, which is something that I saw in a bunch of planning videos. I don't know who coined it. I'll, I guess I'll try to find out. But basically, um, some people are doing it as 24 24s. I did 20 24s because I like it being 2024. <laughs> and anyway, so the idea is that you pick, in my case, 20 things that you want to do 24 times each in the year 2024. And so I just picked like this list of a few different goals that I have that I want to do each of these things 24 times. And it ranges from like baking something, I guess I'll just list them off. I want to bake something 24 times, save $100 into a special like rainy day fund, update the zine distro, write a blog post, rollerblade or bicycle, send a letter, upload a YouTube video, do a qigong routine, do a pathworking session, listen to a new punk artist, a punk artist that's new to me, uh, do a journal prompt, draw a comic page, go to the lighthouse nearby, reach out to a friend, take a nap, <laughs> which feels like maybe a weird thing, but I genuinely am trying to include that as a way of prioritizing rest periods, <laughs> which I've gotten way better at, and I'd like to continue doing that. Do a tarot spread for a moon phase, any moon phase, uh, just sort of a, a th one themed around the moon phase. Make a free library resource, uh, so something like a book list or a lib guide or something that I then share on my website or in library circles. Uh, use up an art supply completely, <laughs> so, you know, wear down an eraser all the way to the nub, uh, wear out a pen all the way, whatever. Study for 10 hours, uh, so that would mean 240 hours total over... And when I say study, I mean very specifically, like, study on a uh, personal project, personal interest, and complement a zinester. <laughs> and so this is basically going to be, like, a tally list. You know, I'll put a little dot every time that I do that until I reach 24 dots. And then here I did this little cutout thing where I have a place where I can actually write down what I did to fulfill the challenge. <laughs> and so I have a little more room to write for that here, here, and then here, which I just love this. It's called the Dutch door. And I am so pleased about it. I love having the header up here. Um, so I'm excited about that. Okay, next up, this is my Happy Mail page. Uh, this is something that I have, I am always talking about, like, I really want a better way to be able to remember what I sent people, because I'll send people zines, or I'll send people letters, and then I'll be like, oh my, you know, when I want to send another one, or when I want to talk to them, it's like, oh crap, like, what things did I already send them? <laughs> and I don't want to have to keep asking, and a lot of times I don't ask, and it just ends up kind of feeling awkward or preventing me from doing it. So the idea of this is that I am providing a space where I can write notes on what I've sent on what date to what people. Just note, like, the person, the date, and the thing, list out the things that I sent. Um, and so these are little flip-out zines, I guess you could call it, whatever, flip-out notepads that I have to include more space for writing, and this is glued at the back. And I'm really proud of this because it opens up and still has, like, the entire uh, notebook to serve as a hard surface to write on. And then this one is the same, but 
Okay, so this is for incoming mail. This is stuff that I've received from people, and then this is stuff that I want to write down what I sent out to people. And so this is, like, again, the same one, but it goes the other way. And I did it specifically offset like this so that when it closes, it doesn't add too much bulk in one area. And I just feel very clever about that. <laughs> so I really like these pages. I like the, um, I like the map background. I love the little cats. I'm, you know, it's certainly a bit of a different vibe, I guess, from the rest of the notebook, but who cares? <laughs> I really like it. I, I hope that this proves useful, and I hope that this is enough space. I was really worried about that, but I'm, I'm sure it will be. It's more space than it looks like. Um, you know, and if it's not, who? I'll tape something in. Who cares? <laughs> anyway, so there's that. And then here... I just have space for a creative projects log, and that's basically going to be, I'm going to leave the rest of this space open for that. I'll cover these up with stickers at some point, uh, or drawings, or I don't know. I'll figure it out as I go. But the idea here is that I just want to write down the date that I did something, and then just like a brief description of the piece that I completed. And this is specifically to help me feel good about recognizing that I do have a consistent art practice. I do a lot of art. I do drawings and collage. And just because I'm not always sharing it online, or just because I'm not always making something that can be printed and reprinted as a zine, like, that doesn't mean that I'm not doing these projects. And um, so I just want a space to be able to write them down so that I can look back and see... Uh, what all I have done at various points in the year, see maybe what times of the year I'm most inspired to do certain types of art, maybe see like how my artistic practice has developed of like, oh, well, this month I was super into collages, and this one I tried bookmaking, and this one I tried more illustration, this and this and that. Uh, yeah, I think that, I think this will be fun. <laughs> it's, it's very blank right now because I'm not entirely sure what format I'm going to want to actually write it down in. Um, I think I'll just figure that out as soon as I have something to write down, and I'll start all this in uh, 2024. Yeah, so that's all. And then at the back here, there's just some note paper again, and I like using this just for random notes. Like, I've literally already used it in writing a few notes about uh, librarianship. And <laughs> so, yeah, this is always handy. I always like going backwards in these sorts of things so that, um, I, why do I like going backwards? I don't know. Oh yeah. So that if there's like overflow from the creative projects, I can keep going here and then end up meeting with myself. Um, yeah. So that's, this. Uh, that's my planner. And uh, once again, it is the Slingshot Organizer. Um, what was something? There was something else I wanted to talk about. Oh yeah, I just wanted to share like my favorite pen. <laughs> this is my favorite pen to use just in general. It's a Pilot G2 regular pen. Let me just grab like a stretch piece of paper. Um, I feel like I should know what this is called. Rollerball? Gel? It's not gel. Whatever. Whatever this is. It's a goddamn pen. <laughs> I... I like, I like talking about stationery. I like learning about stationery and whatever. I just haven't really, um... You know, I don't know a lot of the terminology and that sort of things, but these are the ones that I tend to use. I just get, like, a big old pack, and they end up strewn in backpacks and cups all over the house, and I've got them up here in, like, a box on the top of my desk. And this has worked perfectly well for this notebook. Does not bleed through. Again, I don't think this would be very safe for... Uh, people who use a lot of markers or things that would bleed through. It's probably not fountain pen safe, but for my purposes, it is absolutely perfect. Um, it's all printed on recycled paper, which I really value. And of course, the proceeds from the Slingshot Organizer go toward the 
a slingshot newspaper, which is distributed freely, and they do a lot of local activism work in the Bay Area. Uh, yeah. They also have different colors of covers. Like, you can pick a different color. I specifically picked the red and black, and then this one I specifically picked the silver on black. And it's so cool. They have a ton of different colors uh, that they do for covers. Um, so if you're not especially interested in this aesthetic, they have many, many others that you can choose from. But obviously, this is the coolest one, so I had to pick it. <laughs> um, yeah. That's my planner setup. I and my uh, other journals. Thank you for checking them out with me. And I have definitely enjoyed going into the planner YouTube rabbit hole. It's kind of interesting because it's something that I'm not especially interested in developing as a hobby of of planning, bullet journaling, creative planning, um, you know that sort of thing. But it's really fun to watch. <laughs> it's kind of fun to watch people do even things like unboxings for stuff that I don't use or don't will are not am not very interested in. But I'll be like, oh yes, the 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 rice paper. Oh the the this uh, reusable cover. Like I'll just kind of. <laughs> it's stuff that I don't actually use, but it's just I don't know. It's so fascinating to watch other people enjoy it and enjoy their hobby. Yeah. Alrighty. Uh, I hope that you have a lovely 2024 and, uh, wish me luck and encouragement to continue building a positive relationship with, uh, planning and making goals and generally just having a life that accommodates and, uh, embraces the future. That's so fucking cheesy. Okay, whatever. <laughs> Talk to you guys later. Bye.